So if blockchains have all these practical uses, why aren't they everywhere yet being widely used? Well, blockchains are not perfect and there's still some hurdles that have to be overcome. So blockchain's transparent nature makes it not practical to use for some applications considering that some data is completely out there transparently. For example, I wouldn't want my medical records on a blockchain uh, because that information might fall into the wrong hands. While a lot of data is encrypted in the blockchain, eventually encryption gets broken and then that happens, somebody is going to have access to all the historical data on the blockchain unencrypted. So there's some information that isn't quite suited to be put on a blockchain for privacy reasons. The real world demand and the ability for blockchains to meet real world demand has proven to be a kind of a tricky thing to achieve. There have been situations where networks kind of get clogged because only a certain amount of transactions can be processed at a certain amount of time. For example, Bitcoin can only process about three or four transactions a second. Anything more than that might have a backlog which results in higher fees slowing down of the network. Um, Ethereum doesn't process much more, it processes about 15. Uh, this is compared to Visa, large payment processor, that can process 1,600 transactions a second. So Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies like it have to get to a place where they can meet the real world demand and handle the amount of transactions that traditional payment processors currently handle. Right now, we're just not there. Uh, the network bandwidth, and network bandwidth and disk space is a finite resource. The current technology cannot support the whole world. So basically, we need to find a way for blockchains to meet real-world excess demand that will be put onto them if these are to become mainstream. Right now, there are no clear answers. However, there are several projects working on multiple strategies to address this specific problem. Just second-layer networks like the Lightning Network, Braden and sharding, which basically segments the blockchain, says, hey, we're dividing blockchain up in the neighborhoods. Uh, you're part of this neighborhood. However, your funds are locked into that neighborhood, can't interact with someone outside of your neighborhood. So it segments the blockchain, but it also limits it. Those are just two potential solutions. People are working hard on solving this problem, coming up with more. There's several unanswered questions about blockchain technology. Governance, what do you do when things go wrong? It's tough to, again, find a decision or come to a decision in a decentralized network because you have so many different participants that want different things. Incrementalism, are we de too dependent on the tech? Additionally, appropriateness, is the data useful or needed forever? Now, once something's on a blockchain, it's there forever. It's on that ledger forever. Now, let's say I'm tracking a food shipment of an avocado. I don't need that avocado or the avocado's journey to be on the blockchain forever once it's already been consumed and eaten and the person uh, doesn't get sick. There's no use for keeping that information on the blockchain. It's just kind of taking up space. Additionally, the technology is not quite user-friendly enough. Now, when I first got into the space three years ago, it was extremely difficult to do anything with the tools provided in the cryptocurrency space. It just wasn't, uh, well, it wasn't developed enough yet. Uh, the technology was at a place where it was just difficult to use. In the three years since then, the technology has taken leaps and bounds. However, it is still not there to the point where the average user can, average internet user could use cryptocurrency just easily. You might have to get to a place where people are using cryptocurrency without even knowing they're using cryptocurrency just because it's being transferred on the back end.